point that I think is interesting is that this whole notion of scientific advance and Christian retreat is a story that kind of happily goes along, but you'll notice it comes to a screeching halt at 1859. That exactly 150 years ago when Darwin published The Origin of Species. You might say, well, that's odd. Hasn't there been any science since then? There's actually been a lot. But interestingly, the science of the last 150 years, far from undermining Christianity, supports it in important and interesting ways. And this is why we never hear about it. I'd like to give you just a couple of brief examples, very eye-opening examples of what I mean. Uh, several hundred years ago, somebody um, posed a question to the church father Augustine. This is Augustine who wrote Augustine's Confessions. And the question goes sort of like this. If you think about time, time goes back, but really no matter how far back you go, you can always go further back, can't you? If somebody says, 2,000 years ago, well, before that, 2,001 years ago. One million years ago. Well, before that was one million and one years ago. So time seems to stretch in a kind of elastic, indefinite way, both into the past and into the future. And so the question that was posed to Augustine was, when did God make the universe? Did God actually create the universe? And if he did, what was he doing before that? In other words, how did God occupy his time, which he evidently had a lot of, <laughs> prior to creating the universe? Now, Augustine gave a reply that is actually one of the most astounding replies ever given in the history of thought. He said, based on a meditation on the book of Genesis, he said, God created time along with the universe. In other words, before the universe, you have to put the word before here in quote marks, there was no time. Once upon a time, time did not exist. Now, this is a little bit of a mind bender. Um, and really for many centuries, if you said it, it would be hard to explain. What do you mean that time had a beginning? But Interestingly, today, if you send your son or daughter right down the road to a Physics 101 course at UC Irvine or UC Berkeley, uh, they will find out in the first three months that as a direct consequence of the so-called Big Bang, not only did the universe have a beginning, which is to say not only did all matter have a beginning, but very interestingly, space and time also had a beginning. Uh, in other words, space and time are properties of our universe. Outside our universe, no space, no time. Now, the reason this is very interesting is that for 2,000 years, Christians have been saying two things. Number one, God is eternal. Eternal meaning not living forever, on and on and on. Eternal in the sense of outside of time. And this concept of eternity, which seemed, from a scientific point of view, incoherent, now makes complete sense. If God is outside the universe, he's outside of time. Second, the ancient Hebrews said that there was nothing, and then there was a universe. Now, by the way, this is very different than what any other religion says. In many other religions, you have God or gods that, in a sense, fashion the universe, but they don't make it out of nothing. They take some other pre-existing stuff, and they basically sculpt the universe. But the ancient Hebrews said, no, there was nothing, and then we got a universe. And by the way, the ancient Hebrews, as far as I know, conducted no experiments. <laughs> How did they find out? They basically said, God told us. And 2,000 years later, what I'm saying is that their description of what happened is pretty much right on.